What's up guys, it's Wheezy here and welcome to episode 27 of Pay to Glory. So before we jump into the episode guys, if you could leave a like down below in the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, what you guys are seeing on the screen here is we made some changes to the squad. So obviously as you're seeing in the title or you saw in the title, uh, we do go out and get Prime SVC Henrik Larsson. So in order to fund this, we had to uh, sell Frank Rijkaard. We didn't have to sell Frank Rijkaard. I probably could have sold Antoine Griezmann, um, but Frank Reichard was the guy that I just decided to make that change just in order to kind of mix things up with the squad. Uh, so we ended up selling him. Uh, he gave us about, I think we sold him for four, 450, somewhere in that range. So we had about 600 and something grand to do this. Um, and we made some other changes to the squad too. So obviously removing him, we dumped, or we dropped, um, we didn't dump, we dropped Lothar Mateos down to CDM. Um, and then we ended up putting Deli Ali into the squad. I didn't love Mateus as a CDM. I think he's better as a box-to-box -box guy. He's, his high attacking work rates caused him to jump up a little bit in the play, so having a real defensive player back in the squad uh, is going to be important, so it's going to be a position that excuse me, we need to fill uh, definitely at some point. We need to get a CDM that's really proper. Um, the other SBCs that were out were Frank Rijkaard and uh, Marcel Desailly, both of them, I wouldn't mind doing the loan SBC. We actually did do the loan SBC uh, after this video uh, for Frank Rijkaard because I do want to put Frank Rijkaard in, back in the squad, his prime version. It looks a real great card. Um, I really enjoyed his lower rated one, the 86 one. Uh, all things considered, he's one of the cheaper SBCs or one of the cheaper cards to acquire uh, from an icon standpoint. He's really inexpensive. He's only like four, whatever we sold him for, 450. So he's got average pace but we put a catalyst on it he didn't feel as slow as that card actually looks i think he's only like 67 sprint speed or something but especially with the catalyst on it he didn't feel noticeably slow he doesn't feel quick obviously um he gets run down he's not going to be a guy you're going to go end to end dribbling with but um his positioning and his interceptions from a defensive standpoint his work rates everything was really good he was just a good ball winner in that midfield and he had a real presence to him so i do recommend it and i'm excited to try out the lone version of his prime uh, and then the Marcel Desailly one, that one's going for about one million for the full version, whereas Frank Rijkaard's only going for about seven eighty, I think, at the moment right now. Uh, but the Marcel Desailly version, it, like it's some like one point one, one point two million, which is quite expensive still. It looks like a real bossy card. I think he is uh, eighty three pace and then like ninety defending or something like that. So as a center back, I've heard good things. I would like to try them out. I'm probably going to consider doing the loan version. The only problem with the loan versions is you can. It's still not super cheap. Like you're still spending about ten twelve k on these cards um, unless you have all of this stuff sitting in a club, which a lot of you probably do not. Just have all of these cards just sitting in a club. But um, to go out and dump ten fifteen k on you know, 10 SBCs, that's 150 grand if you've got a whole bunch of these lone prime icons just sitting in your club like I do. So I need to start being a little bit more uh, careful about the ones that I acquire because I, you know, after 20 games, they're, you're discard, right? They're worthless. So I don't want to totally waste it. Um, just for this weekend, um, we did qualify, obviously, for the weekend league in the last episode. So the next episode, I'm going to play some weekend league. Uh, you guys are going to see me play some games. I just want to get them in today. Um, so we did do that prime icon Rykard in order to fit in the team because I'd rather go into the weekend league with him than uh, with Bakayoko in there. Bakayoko is okay uh, if we really have to, but I think he's a card that's kind of been surpassed as more beast cards come into the game. Um, so anyway, back to this SBC. Uh, at the time that I recorded this, I did this basically almost right after it came out. I was like less than an hour after it came out. Um, it was going for about 430 if you had nothing else in your club. Uh, I had some of the stuff in my club, including a Mesut Ozil, uh, a couple other cards um, here and there, like a Pedro, Berkey, a couple guys that would save me coins here and there. So in theory, it should have taken me down to about 380, um, but because this had gone out and with Futt been obviously the high or the cheapest SBC is going to be the cards that everybody just buys. Um, so the cards actually get inflated. So when it drops down, if you have a couple cards in your club, it will probably shoot right back up just because of the inflation of Futbin. So you have to be a little bit creative with the squads you see in Futbin. I wasn't really. I essentially just 
didn't want to screw around and didn't want to waste too much time doing this um, because I wanted to get the games in. So I just jumped right in and just built the teams that were there. So we paid a little bit of an inflated fee uh, for some of them. So it ended up costing me probably about 400k uh, after everything was said and done. Um, but it's still pretty good. 400k for that prime SBC Henrik Larsson uh, is a really decent price. Uh, he's going for about five something right now, like 530. I think it was the last I checked this morning. He might be down a little bit from that, but I expect him to kind of sit in that kind of 500 range. Um, it was really inexpensive from an SBC icon standpoint. Uh, also, really easy to do from a team composition standpoint, um, especially the the Feyenoord, the Sweden, and the Celtic ones, those ones will cost you just a couple K. And the Sweden one actually cost me, I think it was uh, this one right here. I had those three Swedish players who were actually probably the more expensive cards in the club. So I think with buying Bartra and, um, or was it this one or was it another one? It was, a, it, it was one of these kind of lower rated ones. It, it only costed me about um, 1.5k. One of the squads was just like super cheap for me to do, but the ones that are going to run you the most are obviously the 85 and 86 or higher. So I think Frank Reichardt's got like an 87 in his first full version. So it's going to uh, we're going to have to save a little bit of money in order to finally get that one. He is a card that I probably would uh, end up getting for my final team. Uh, I would rather spend the 700 coins or 700k to get him then save up the 1.8 to get a Patrick Vieira. I would obviously rather have Patrick Vieira, but Vieira is just so expensive right now. Um, unless we, you know, hit, hit a gold mine, I really don't want to put that much more money, if any money at all, into the game uh, at this point. So um, at this point, I could see us realistically getting uh, a Frank Reichardt Prime SBC later in the year. But anyway, back to the actual uh, man at hand here. We do unlock this Henrik Larsson. What I will say about him is very similar to some of the other reviews that I've watched with him. His pace felt okay. We ended up throwing a hunter on him, so he feels like he's got okay pace. He can, you know, once he gets going, he's really good. He, his acceleration wasn't too bad, but his shooting was very poor for me. So I'll put it this way. I played five games with him. I scored one goal and four assists with him. So that ROI for me was really awful. Uh, he pussyfooted a lot of shots, pardon my language on that, but he just, like, he really scuffed a lot of shots. Um, but there is a caveat to this, so I know some of you are going to get annoyed at me for saying this, but the first two games that I played, including this one, I just dumped him in the team. It was 84 rated. So if you know me at all, if you watch any of my previous episodes, you know where I'm going with this. And I wish I had games two and three games two and three got corrupted because i forgot to split them up and the file got corrupted but games one and two we lost both and my team played horribly and i'm not saying that's the reason we lost maybe we would have lost anyway this guy had a really weird team but anybody with that weird a team that's playing in division three is usually a pretty good player um but you guys are gonna see it was just my team would go offside they'd under hit shots um, I think, you know, there is some learning curve with Henrik Larsson that's going to require me getting used to him too, just in the way he shoots. But I'm going to use a different example. The example that I'll have regarding the way the team played was Luka Modric. So Luka Modric, besides a pass like that that's really simple, so many of his passes out of midfield, even if I was hitting driven pass, was were getting intercepted. So not just they were intercepted, but everything that I was doing, it felt like the defenders were covering the lanes perfectly. And I'm not talking about the guy manually doing it. I'm talking about, um, I'm talking about the computer AI. It would just cover everything perfectly. And any pass that I would make that was driven, that was of length at all, would drive right to his back Ayoko or right to his Renato Sanchez or even Eden Hazard was coming in and intercepting passes. And Luka Modric has 99 passing. So this is not like some scrub that I'm passing with. So that's why I'm using his him as, a, as an example. Um, it was just crazy the amount of, like, under hit passes, the amount of um, intercepted passes, and not only that, but like any time the opponent got anywhere near me, he would intercept the ball. Like he would come and just take the ball off me in stride. And it was just, I couldn't explain it. Like it was not something that I've ever had to deal with um, unless my team was being handicapped, which I know you guys hate that term, but I couldn't think of a better way to describe it. Like, this guy got a red card. I was just on him offensively, but this is, you know, a perfect example. I'll get back to Luka Modric in a sec, but I just wanted to comment on this penalty. This is the same penalty technique I use all the time. Three and a half bars off to the right. Look at how low he hits it. That's Diego Maradona. 
So three and a half bars or three bars usually goes right into the top off to one of the sides. So if you're looking at this screen, it'll go right about here, right in here. And it just didn't. It just drove right low into the keeper's hands. And he still had to pick the right side. But every other penalty you guys saw me take in my previous episodes, it's rocketing into the top. So I just, it was things like that happening over and over and over. But anyway, back to the Luka Modric example. It, in this game, I essentially had to keep the ball away from him at all times. If I got anywhere near any of his players, they would come and dispossess me. Like It's like my players had zero strength. Um, so as you guys are seeing here, I didn't even want to get into physical battles. So as you guys see stuff like that, he was just taking the ball away from me. Bellerin, wraparound tackles. like, And then when it comes to him, look at him bouncing off of tackles. Like I can't put a tackle in. A, a scuff shot and Courtois pushes it wide. Like... I don't know a better way to describe it other than just, and look at that, like charisma, like the ball plays into him, I just want to take it in stride, and it doesn't even identify that I have the ball, and the guy just kicks it right into the keeper, so if there is not a better description of handicap, like I really don't know what it is. I went low driven here with Diego Maradona far post, I granted it's not the easiest angle, but he just low drove it to the near post and it was just an easy under hit shot for the keeper to parry and, and knock wide uh, and we ended up losing one nothing. It wasn't like I didn't have the chances but my players, the entire game, uh, everything offensively, it was just, it was, it was labored, it was tedious and, you know, I apologize for using that term handicap but I, I don't, I can't think of a better way to describe it. It was the, it was like I was having to play with a team that was getting held back. Like, it was like they were running, but they just had a parachute behind them. They just couldn't get, or there were weights dragging them. Like, it just, everything I was doing was just so labored. And I can't speak on his behalf. I don't know what he was like uh, in terms of his gameplay. Maybe it's connection. I don't know what causes it. But, man, all I can tell you is that game and then the next game, which unfortunately got corrupted, we lost 5-4, and it was the same thing. My team played like absolute crap. The guy was actually up 5-1, okay, if you guys can believe that. I, I, he wasn't a bad player, but he was no better than, you know, this guy or the previous opponent. And everything this guy touched turned to gold. He had, um, I think he had a French team or something like that, like a full French team. But he had Anthony Martial, and like he would just go side to side, and Martial would run. And I remember one of his goals, he was kind of off to the side of the six-yard box, and he just played this ball side to side, and Martial ran in behind and rocketed a shot from almost no angle, like just turned on a shot left-footed, and it went right across the front of my goal into the far post, hit the post, and rang around the net. Like, he just absolutely rocketed from, like, the dumbest angle. And, like, literally, I think he had five shots, and they just all flew in. Like, it was he was either the most efficient shooter I've ever seen, or there was just some other factor at play. So those first two games, I'm sorry for sounding like a whiner here. It's not about losing. I, I could care less. It was just how my team felt. Like those first two games, they were just absolutely horrifying. I was down 5-1. And the only reason that it changed was I went all out attack. And I went 3-4-1-2. Um, and I just went all offense. And my team finally started forcing the ball forward. But I just couldn't get anything going. So those first two games I was playing on 84 overall. I went and changed my team to 83. I removed Moussa Dembele off the bench and I put another bronze player in, dropped the team down to 83, and shockingly, conveniently I guess, I ended up winning, you know, and my team would just, they just felt better. And even in this game, you know, I spoiler alert here, I, I'm sorry for saying this, but we ended up losing this game 3-2. But my team, I can't complain because my team played fine. This guy was just a good opponent. And uh, I'm not saying that I only lose to, like, the best opponents in the world and you have to be, like, a world beater to beat me or anything like that. But this guy was just, he was a good opponent. He was just a good guy. Uh, and, or not a good guy, but I don't know what he's like. But he was just a good player. And he was you could tell he was a foot champs player and the way he defended, uh, the way he attacked was a lot of side-to-side -side stuff. But, you know, that's what the meta is of the game. But, you know, he deserved to win this game because he played well. His goals were legit. And my team, more importantly, I don't know what they were doing here. Like, look at that, how much room this guy had. Um, but, you know, my team was playing fine. Like, it was not it was not the game was the reason that I lost this one. Whereas it felt like the game was one of the many reasons that I lost um, the first two. Or at least the major reason that I lost the first two. Like, I just couldn't... I couldn't fight the game. Like, I couldn't beat the game. The game was just doing a bunch of it. It's like getting fifa I guess, is the best way of putting it. But anyway, back into this gameplay. Um, I will say that this guy, like I said, was a good opponent. But I will say, uh, 
you know, it was a fair game and I did have the chance to win it, but I just, you know, he was blocking everything. And blocking is also another thing that I just want you guys to take notice. I don't understand between this game and the next game how some games every shot gets blocked. So this guy, I don't know if he was just a really, really good defender, but his computer defense, like the computer AI was blocking every single thing. So we just went ultra attacking off kickoff and I just essentially wanted a goal. I don't remember if that was right off kickoff or not, but I just went right at him and just kind of caught him um, a little bit, you know, on the back heel. I don't think he was expecting me to come at him that quickly, but we ended up catching him on the break, making it 2-1. But if you see a lot of the shots and a lot of the efforts that I had, shots are not getting through. And like I said, with his AI, I don't know if it's him or if it's the way he composed his team or what, but his team just played so defensive. At this point, he switched to a 4-3-3 defensive uh, with the two CDMs in the center midfield. And you'll understand why I put that in there in a sec. The way he changed his play, and this is why I think, you know, you could tell that he was a foot champs player, is he just evolved his game, and he essentially was just playing wide to wide, stretching my team, and it worked really well. Um, this was uh, an unlucky miss from him. Thankfully, Bailly didn't scuff that, so uh, we were obviously having to push up the field a lot more in order to try to get a goal, but, you know, he was just doing this type of stuff, uh, and that's where that 4-3-3 comes in really handy. He knew what he was doing. He went that sweat goal just to... Um, get that third equal or get that third uh, insurance goal for him and it ended up working quite well um, but we were just really trying to press I really probably should have tried changing my formation to counter attack him but I just wanted to stick with what works and then we end up getting a late one uh, probably a 90th minute cheese there but still a well worked goal a cross goal and you know that in behind with uh, Antoine Griezmann so we end up pulling it back 3-2 but you know this guy was obviously a good enough player he knew he would know what to do and he just essentially killed clock with his defensive line um, late in the game so the one learning lesson for me which I should have known better I should have actually done it was to go with 3-4-1-2 when I'm down one um, because what that does is it's essentially going to set four guys high so it won't let a guy play around the back it also is a fairly wide formation and if you need to score a goal and you find that your opponent's just playing side to side, switching the ball, being annoying, go to that 3-4-1-2 because it gets guys high, it sits on those back two wings, and it puts them under. It essentially goes man for man. Um, so you don't want to draw guys out of position. You don't want to call second man press. You really want to play man to man, but it's essentially going to cover all of those guys. So it's not going to let a guy just screw around with it in his midfield and his defensive line. And... Um, go back into um, a defensive shell. So it's going to be something that I highly recommend doing if you don't already have it in your game already. Um, and then this was essentially our fifth game. So what you guys saw was the first and the fourth, the second and third got corrupted. And this was our fifth game. Um, we ended up finishing our last season. We just held Division Three, uh, which again was really annoying. But, you know, there's, I'm just amazed at the amount of talent, like the quality of player that we're coming up against. I want to say the amount of talent, but like how good the players are in Division Three. I don't understand why Division 4 was like that. Maybe it's just the way divisions are now. There's so many good players. But um, this game was the one I wanted to talk about in terms of like shot blocking. So in the previous game, uh, every shot was getting blocked. This was the opposite. It felt like the defense weren't blocking anything. Um, this guy just does a side-to-side, -side, uh, ends up scoring his first goal. That's uh, one of the ones that I just don't understand. I'd really like to see FIFA... Um, uh, really address the side to side I just think it's way too overpowered and that's not because the guy scored it against me like even if I score those goals but essentially what happens is especially in foot champs what you get is guys going side to side to side if it's clogged up this way they go right back around on the other side and what that's doing is the defense almost are too slow for the offense so the defense gets stuck on one side ball watching and then the ball goes over and their foot or they're like a step behind so if you can get the ball over from one side to another quick enough the key run is going to be the defensive wing back is too dumb or too slow to identify that run and the winger will always get in behind. So if you go back to the center mid, you can play a little through ball in behind to the winger and then low drive a shot across, which is essentially what you saw there. Um, you know, I'm not defending my defense. My defending was probably average at best in that play, but I just don't understand why it works so well. I'd like to see them address it. I don't know how this was not a foul. That was shocking. Uh, that was Casemiro, too, keeping up with Antoine Griezmann. I know he had a bit of a step, but I just do not get how he kept up with him. Uh, and then this, I really thought that I had some here. I tried to do the cutback and, and pullback, but Henrik Larsson just screwed that up. And then I don't know if there was a button delay on that shot, because I don't know why I would ever shoot from there. But I guess I must have hit tackle, 
and the button delay caused him to shoot at one time. So we end up going into the half 1-1 against this guy. Uh, I had a couple chances. He had a couple chances. We were just going back and forth. This was a very offensive-minded game. Uh, the defense was doing its job, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't great. He uh, was unlucky to miss an opportunity there. Great save off of Valencia. Um, probably a little frustrating for him, but you know these types of shots like Henrik Larsson got got it through, but yeah, that was a low driven and it still went right into the keeper's hands. His shooting is just too. It's like it's under hit. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to describe it other than that. Like he's it's like he's not generating enough power. I don't know what his shot power is, but I'm gonna have to learn how to put more shot power on his shots because with Antoine Griezmann and especially Lacazette, it feels like they put the perfect amount of power on it and um, it just kind of finds its way into the corners. With the Henrik Larsson, at least in my first, you know, my first day with them, everything was just under hit. It was just going into the keeper's hands. It was just riding it along the floor, and it was just really annoying. So we end up going late into the second half. I give the ball away there with Luka Modric. That was totally my mistake. Um, the game was playing fine. It was just my mistake. This guy was a decent enough opponent, and he was pressing me high, and I was just frustrated and ended up kind of forcing the ball or trying to force the ball out of my midfield with Luka Modric, gave it away. He played it and one-timed it in with Neymar. So no complaints there, just uh, my mistake. So we go to a, that 3-4-1-2 that I was talking about. And you guys are going to see here, um, when we get back into the gameplay, you're just going to see, watch the way my team is sitting. They're sitting really high. Those four attackers are really sitting in um, excellent positions. And it's really important because look at this, look at that. All those, all those men are covered. And that's really important because he wanted to really be a dick and just play it around his back. You could tell he was dropping it with his keeper he was trying to play it short and why that's important is right here this late in the game I was reliant on this happening I could tell that his player switch and you could see like frustratingly try to slide tackle me from behind um, but I was relying on him and his player switching being really poor there and I just played a direct through ball right into him and it happened exactly as I expected because I know this has happened to me before when I played that through ball the defender just went like this. And he just kind of turned away in the wrong direction, and away goes Maradona. A little bit of a, um, a cheap uh, method, I guess, of scoring, but hey, I mean, you still got to stop those. So, uh, unfortunately for him, uh, you know, I was able to pull back the draw, but it was probably deserved. It was a really back and forth game, and it was actually a really entertaining game to, uh, to play and maybe to watch, I guess. It was just super offensive. Um, but we do end up getting uh, the draw in our first game of the season. So I will end up finishing the season's run, but the next game that I want, or the next uh, episode that I want to uh, record is going to be, oh, sorry, I got a phone call there. So the next episode that I want to record is going to be uh, of um, Fudge Champs. So I do want to get on, play that Fudge Champs that we ended up winning with the, the Vitality kit and everything like that. So we can actually go and play um, some real competitive games because for some reason just I don't know why seasons just rubs me the wrong way I don't know if it's the competition level, but I just feel like foot champs is almost better Like I feel like it's better games like obviously you're gonna get really good opponents in in that too, but For some reason just seasons. Uh, I just don't get on with seasons. I just find them very frustrating. They're very spammy and I've had too many weird like instances happening like too many stupid things are happening in seasons like uh, the handicap issue but I blame that more on the actual team composition being 84 rated but that seems to always affect me in seasons for some reason so maybe it's just me but um, I don't necessarily want to do it I'm only doing it for this series and also because it's almost impossible to find online single games uh, but anyway that's going to be it for me I apologize I'm a little bit complaining a little bit whiny maybe I'm just hangry but um, for the rest of the episode uh, you guys are just seeing kind of some of the prizes that we get so that's going to be um, the end of today's episode, uh, and I appreciate you guys sticking with me till the end. So until episode 28, uh, you guys will see that very shortly. Take care. Peace.